Derby County. Yeah! The, the atmosphere was building up. We, you know, the FA Cup had arrived to Plymouth, and everybody wanted to know about us, which was fantastic. Uh, it was difficult to buy a, a green and white scarf. You know, there's souvenirs, um, programs, and whatever. Everybody wanted to get a hands on. Everybody wanted tickets. You know, and, and we were looking, looking to to move forward. And, and at that stage, we felt that we. You know that we could go, you know, all the way really. The highlight for me was that we used to go down to St Melian before every round and spend two or three days down at the uh, um, St Melian Golf and Country Club, playing a bit of golf, uh, obviously doing training as well. But it used to get us away from the club, and um, like I say, for the last few rounds, all the, the major uh, TV companies and uh, papers were there with us uh, doing a day-to-day -day check. My memory of that was just the deafening noise coming down the tunnel, you know, we leading the side out. In the warm-up before, it was it was really, really noisy, but nothing prepares you for uh, a full house in, in the old stadium there, 32, 33,000, whatever it was. It was just deafening coming out there at, at five to three for the warm-up. All the injury problems in the team have cleared up. Chris Harrison and Lindsay Smith are fit for the centre of the defence. Gordon Stanniford up front. And so it's the team which knocked out West Bromwich Albion in the last round when the only goal of the match was scored by Tommy Tynan. According to the Derby County management, these are the most understanding fans in the land. Some 7,500 of them have come down to Plymouth for the afternoon match. But they've seen their side fall from the heights to be involved in a survival battle at the bottom of the second division. But now, two matches away from Wembley, and in their lineup, two survivors of the side which was beaten in the semi final of 1976 Archie Gemmell at number four, the captain, and Steve Powell at number six. With a famous face among the Argyle supporters, he's followed them in good days and in not just good days former leader of the Labour Party, Michael Foote. The referee, Brian Stevens of Stonehouse in Gloucestershire, who was in charge of Bournemouth against Manchester United and Brighton against Liverpool. Statistically, the 17th side in Division 3 play the 20th side in Division 2. And from this atmosphere, what greater proof could there be of the magic of the FA Cup? Lindsay Smith, so important to the Argyle side that he was fit. First touch for Jeff Crudgington. Stanley Paul. They answered the referee. Did well to keep control. Did Stanley Paul. Rogers. Giselle. Out by Burns. Davison and Hooks forward. He's coming to Hooks. Giselle with him. Powell. Harrison. Hooks. by Hodges challenged by Harrison on hooks it's Davison Robertson Harrison across Andrews challenged quite perfectly Davison he's got away from Smith Goal kick, and how well Lindsay Smith got back. I think Davison thought that he left him for dead. Tynan, Cherry 
did very well. Kenny Burns had to make a play for it because China was behind Burns. And Steve Cherry, who must also have been conscious of Tynan's position, did extremely well to adjust his position slightly and parry away. Lee Cooper. His first touch let him down a bit. Hodges. Determination from Uzel. Robertson. Lindsay Smith alongside. And this puts interception. Team manager at Derby County, Peter Taylor just behind him. Phillips, nice touch to Hodges. Tynan, stunning fourth shot. Maybe a little hurried, but so easy to say from sitting in the stand. Good play there by Plymouth. Feel the stand up has rushed a little bit. But John Hoare on the left there, who was a little concerned about whether his side would freeze, knows already that they haven't. And Cherry loses it. Hodges blocked by Burns. Smith. Burns goes in chase. Won by Lindsay Smith. Hurried again by Stanipal. But this is a cracking cup tie. And if Plymouth are to win this tie, we're reaching the stage when they've got to have something to show for their supremacy. Oh, the home crowd showing what they feel about the first 45 minutes. Slightly nervous start by one or two of the Argyle players, but once they're settled down, they have without question been the better team. But at half time, it's Plymouth Argyle nil, Derby County nil. And there's the colourful umbrella lil, all decked out in Plymouth Argyle colours. Plymouth's record here at Home Park, they've won 12 and drawn 9 of their 22 games. And, uh, Total goals scored, 44 of the 59 have come here. So they are formidable opposition in their own city. Gordon Nisbet, the first throw of the half. A good first half. It's difficult to find a Plymouth player who didn't. Tynan. Rogers, Phillips, Hodges, two men over for a moment there, Plymouth. Good jump by Davison. Tynan offers himself, Butcher follows. Lee Cooper. Falls to Rogers, does it? Good play by Barton. Then the block from Stanford. A really good save. Barton had to get his foot in there, but it fell rather kindly for Plymouth. And Steve Cherry did awfully well against Stanford. Rogers blocked by Butcher. Phillips didn't realise that Hooks was there. But the referee says that Hooks fouled him. Fine save by Steve Cherry. Gordon Sanifer puts right in on him. Keeper's kick. Rogers. Nisbet.
chest. The hook comes off, and Dave Watson won a cup winner's medal with Sunderland 11 years ago. Comes on to play up front. Quite capable of doing so. Goalkeeper available, and not at the moment under pressure. Saviour of his side. Pushed it onto the left post. Burns. Certainly has been a craggy rock. On which Plymouth have found them for the moment at least. Because a replay is needed. But how close they came. Gordon Sanderford knows better than anyone else. Time will be talked about for a long time, and they will talk about the moment seven minutes from time when Gordon Stanford singed the fingers of Steve Cherry, who pushed the ball onto one post, it came back off that post, hit the other one, and stayed out. And as a result of that, Plymouth Argyle, who go off to a tremendous applause, end at nil nil and have to go to the baseball ground to try to repeat what they did at West Bromwich Army. So much the better side for a full hour, at which point we saw a bit of derby. But the final result, nil-nil. That was a long way away when, uh, when Gordon Staniforth sort of hit the shot, but I thought it was in. Uh, and, and it's hit the post, and I thought it's gone in off the post. And then it's hit the other post, and I thought, well, it's gone in off two posts. <laughs> and how it came out, I, I never know to this day. Uh, I suppose then you think, oh, we might have blown this, it might not be our day, because we, we were so much on top. I, I can't remember touching the ball during the game, really. Well, I think it's probably legendary now, you know, to, to hit the both post and bar. Um, I still don't know how it didn't go in. I'm sure Stanley doesn't know how it didn't go in. You know, we, we thought we had done enough. But it took a, another replay when everybody thought that we were down and out and that would be the end of it. Um, all the experts have, have written us off.